Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Yoshimura. That's right, motorcycle fans, it's that time of year again. Football is officially over, and whether you won big on the Broncos or lost your ear on the Panthers, there's one thing that's a sure bet. We missed you. Welcome to the first episode of 2016. We have a new and improved version of your favorite talk show, featuring some of the best products and fastest motorcycle racers on the planet. While you are hibernating this off-season, the motorcycle industry has been diligently working towards 2016. So let's get down to business. A lot has happened since we last met. American British Superbike racer James Rispoli launched his own line of nutrition bars. Moto America racer Elena Myers got married. Team M4 mechanic and super fast racer Dustin Meter had a baby, and that's just the beginning. Tentative series schedules for AMA Pro Flat Track, Moto America, CMRA, Weira, and more have been released for 2016. Next Moto Champion introduced a cycling team with legends Scott Russell, JD Beach, Bobby Fong, and a few more Moto America racers. Isle of Man and Macau GP specialist Brandon Cretu has made a full-time Moto America Superbike plan. The 2015 Superstock 1000 champion Road Race Factory's Jake Gagne got promoted to Superbike, and Bobby Fong and Ozzy Dave Anthony will both be riding for latest motors racing on Kawasaki's in the Superstock 1000 class. Exciting stuff? We think so. Some of your favorite racers have been busy preparing for this season. Yoshimura Suzuki Superbike teammates Jake Lewis and Roger Hayden spent the winter months in sunny California. Melissa Parrish trains before making her big announcement. Team Yamalu Westby Racing strikes a pose. Caleb DeCarroll has been cross-training in Snowcross. And Andy Debrino gets ready to race his EDR Performance Yamaha in Super Stock 600 with this awesome wheelie. While contracts are still being finalized and many of your favorite racers have made their big announcements, one fan favorite, Danny Eslick, has yet to make his until now. We have a great show for you today with two-time Daytona 200 winner Danny Eslick here to announce his 2016 plans exclusively on the next Moto Champion Talk Show. But first, have you been cooped up this winter? Has your baby been sitting in the garage for the last few months collecting dust? Well, Poxitani Phil said spring is in the air, meaning it's time to shake off the dust, or in some cases the snow, and get out and ride. If you've been thinking about attending a track day to kick off your 2016 riding season, let us show you a great video from Sport Bike Track Time, giving you a track day from start to finish. Watch this. In our weekly product spotlight segment, you usually see me behind a table looking at the latest gear and gadgets, but this week it's a little different. We're looking at a sport bike track time product, which is a track day at Barber Motorsports Park. And it all starts with this online check-in. Each track day is a little different, so I always like to look at the motorcycle and gear requirements. STT has a very detailed track day regulations page, so there's no surprises when we show up to the track. From there, I'm gonna to go to buy track time. It gives me the option to choose by the month or by the state. I'm gonna choose by the state. Looking at Alabama, there's two options, Barber and Little Talladega. We're going to Barber. I'm gonna pick the next available date. It's gonna give me information on, you know, that there's camping available and there's power available to hook up to. Uh, gives me the price. I'm gonna go ahead and check out and we're gonna make our way down to Barber. showed up at 7 a.m., signed in, unloaded, and brought the bikes down for a very thorough, safety-focused tech inspection. At 8.30 a.m., there's a mandatory riders meeting where Trevor Sadler gives us the do's and don'ts of Barber Motorsports Park, along with a review of the flags you might see on the track today. Putting on a track day is a big production with a lot of moving parts. STT owner Richard Harris has been running one of the largest track day companies in the country for over five years. And I wanted to know, what makes the Sport Bike Track Time program so successful? STT's staff is among the best, I think, in, uh, in the industry. Uh, we have a dedicated 150 plus people who work uh, tirelessly, you know, it's their passion as well. So I think uh, the number one thing about our company is the wide range of staff and how they care and, and, and their dedication to the sport. STT has three levels to choose from, novice, intermediate, and advanced. 
To get the field of SCT experience, we're going to go through the novice program, which starts off by dividing riders into groups based on track day experience. The first classroom session is instruction accompanied by a slideshow that's packed with guidelines, rules, and safety procedures. From there, we suit up and head out to our first track session. This was 20 minutes of very controlled laps where riders get to know the track by following the instructor around in a single file line. From there, it was back to the classroom. This time, there was a focus on throttle control, looking through the corners, and proper foot position on the pegs. Like the first session, the second 20-minute session was very controlled, which seemed to give students more time to get comfortable. Passing was only allowed when the instructor signaled you to pass. There was a third classroom session, a third controlled track session, and then you break for lunch. I think the biggest advantage to an STT track day is that the groups are small, limited to only four to five per instructor, and the classroom and on-track instruction is included in the cost of the track day. So you're not paying $285 for a track day and then another $500 to have an instructor spend time with you. For $285, you get it all. Besides including a coach with the track day, I want to know what else separates STT from other track days. I think STT uh, is different from, from everyone else. It's your one-stop shop. Uh, whether you're a first-time track day rider or a 10-year advanced rider, we've got someone on staff that I think uh, could help you. You know, whether you need tires or suspension work, uh, we've got even mechanics on staff sometimes that could change your oil or fix a part. So uh, again, we, we have a wide range from beginning to end. It's your one-stop shop for track days. After a couple of adrenaline pumping sessions of going over 150 miles per hour and trying to hit your marks, one can easily become addicted to track days. And you might even want to start racing. So where do you go from here? We also offer uh, pro schools. So you can come to us, uh, ride for a day, and at the end of the day we teach you everything you need to know to go club racing. So you can get your wearer license, your CCS license, and uh, we can graduate you up on from a track day to uh, racing if that's what you desire to do. A sport bike track time track day is a great place to start. From beginning to end, safety was a top priority. This event stayed on schedule because it was professionally managed. Each group was getting a 20 minute session every hour, so there was more than enough track time throughout the day. I still can't believe the instruction is included at no additional cost. If you've never been to a track day, STT will give you one for free. Contact them at 888-390-4020 or visit their website at sportbiketracktime.com. I'm definitely going back and I hope to see you there. I'm John Boucher and that's this week's Product Spotlight. We'll be right back after this commercial break with this week's guest, Danny Eslick. two-time Daytona 200 winner, XR 1200, and Daytona Sport Bike champ. He's a first-timer on the next Moto Champion talk show, and he's our good friend, number 69, Danny Eslick. Danny, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So we're going to get to the big news eventually, but we want to start by catching up a little bit. Uh, you've been busy this offseason, to say the least. Tell us what you've been doing. Uh, I've been just trying to stay busy, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, had the opportunity to go race a mini sprint um, race car here at the Tulsa Shootout, which is a uh, a huge race. I think there was 1,200 entries for uh, for the event for the week, and I missed making a transfer to uh, to a B main event by one spot. My first time racing a car, so that was a lot of fun to to kind of get a dabble in that a little bit. And then uh, just got back from a big trip up to Canada, uh, where I went up and rode on the ice. And I'd rode a speedway bike a couple weeks before that for the first time on ice, but I'd never rode a speedway bike. So did the speedway bike on ice, and then went and rode XR100s on the ice up in Canada for a couple days. And I uh, had an absolute blast doing that for the uh, J.R. McRae Invitational. And uh, then we went to Whistler and did some snowboarding for a few days. And 
first time snowboarding, so that was definitely a treat up there. Did you get to do any of the fresh tracks or anything like that, snow when it was powder at the top of the mountain? It was, they, we were getting a little bit of fresh snow. For me, it was, I would call it fresh powder, but yeah, for the locals, it was just barely getting any kind of dusting. But I had a blast and still got my arms and feet and didn't tear anything up snowboard, so I thought I did pretty good. Very good. And you also uh, participated in Super Prestigio event that took place in Vegas a few months ago. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I participate on just the just the Grand National Dirt Track side of it. Um, with me qualifying for a couple main events, they really couldn't let me slide in on the Super Prestigio side of it, which was understandable. Um, but I had an absolute blast. I got to you know make the twelve rider main event out there in Vegas, and you know it's bar banging, bar to bar. Nobody's no love lost for anybody, and uh, to put it in that main event meant a lot to me. Um, I come from dirt track background, have taken a few years off here recently, but been getting back at it this year. And, and to put in that main event meant a lot. And, uh, you know, it, it was just a, a good time there in Vegas. So let's touch on that a little bit, Danny. So last season was the first time in a long time that we've missed out on you being at the racetrack, even for just a few rounds. Um, no deal was put together for you last year, and you were kind of left uh, – showing up at, at sporadic events. I think you missed three, you said. So talk about that. It was the first time in your career that you were really having to go out and look for a ride. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, we started off the season really strong at Daytona with the, with the win and just couldn't really put anything together for a full deal there. And um, then along came the Turbo Turtle guys and, and put the Honda deal underneath me for a few races. And, you know, we had a pretty good, pretty solid program. We were running top five in Superbike there. And, uh you know, it was it was just kind of okay there, and and then they pulled the plug on that thing, and and uh, missed a couple rounds, and then uh, got a got the call from the Aprilia guys to ride the final round on on uh, the HSBK Aprilia, and I had absolute ball riding that bike and and working with the team, and was very fortunate to to get a show up the last round and put a good solid ride in, you know, show everybody that I still got it, and. Uh, you know, there's just kind of one of them years, you know, I've never really missed any races from crashes or being hurt. So, you know, when I came back, everybody's like, oh, it's nice to have you back and, and uh, felt very welcoming and, and good to be back around the, the racing family for sure. So talk about it, though. I mean, at any point were you thinking this could be my last season or maybe this is time to hang it up and go look for something else to do? I mean, what was the feeling there? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of part of the reason I was out hitting the dirt tracks is, uh, you know, sitting at home on the couch isn't really that much fun. You know, I didn't. Uh, I don't enjoy that. I like getting out and going fast and getting sideways and pop a wheelie. So, you know, for me, I wasn't going to, it wasn't an option. It was find something and, and there's plenty of dirt track races to hit all over the country. So, you know, I uh, packed up the steel shoe and, and uh, we went dirt tracking. There you go. And we're going to get to what's going on with you for 2016. First, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll come back and talk about that. Stay tight. Hello. This little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left, and like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab a hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle, see how much you could save. And we're back and we're just catching up with our good friend Danny S. Like Danny, you said last year you got to kick off your season with another Daytona 200 win. What's in the plans for 2016 in terms of the 200 for you? Uh, well, definitely some big plans. Uh, you know, one is to to hold on to that trophy. I've had it two years in a row, and I don't really feel like letting it go just yet. It's uh, been kind of nice looking at them things the past couple of years. So um, we've got an awesome deal set up with TOBC Racing and Yamaha on a R6 for the 200 and, and looking forward to going down there. We tested it back in October um, and everything went really good. We actually went faster on that uh, R6 than the bike that we raced last year. So that was pretty promising and working with some of the same crew and, and got some guys that I've worked with in the past coming on board to help out. So we're going to have, uh, you know, another great shot at winning the 200 and, you know, obviously the target will be on my back and it's going to be up to me to, to uh, you know, stay on the gas and stay up in the front of this deal. Yeah, I think you can handle having the target on your back. Uh, the first Daytona 200 you won, you led, I think, the entire race. And for anybody who doesn't know, he won the Daytona 200 last year with TOBC. So you're running it again with them this year. And Danny, let's just go ahead and do the thing. Tell us about your 2016 plans. Oh, uh, it's uh, I'm really excited about it. I mean, to to be doing the 200 with the TOBC team again is really awesome. But to ride the full season on one of the new 
R1s is going to be even better for the 2016 Moto America Super Stock season. So I'm uh, super stoked to be working with Michelle and the TOBC crew. Um, Fitzgerald glider kits. Yamaha is obviously helping out big time and Yamaha generators and Moto America is you know, on board helping us out and uh, going to be back in RS Taichi leathers and, and having fun and sliding that R1 around. Oh, Danny, you're smiling. It's making me so happy to see you're happy. You said you're happy for the fans. Elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be good. Uh, you know, I, I obviously enjoy racing and good battles and the super stock class has been, been uh, strong and, and having super bike guys out there to chase around on the super stock bikes is, is going to be definitely a big chore. I mean, we all watched Gagne do it last year and get up there and fight with those guys. And, you know, I'd like to think that I have a, a shot at getting up there and mixing it up with those boys, rubbing some elbows with those guys. And that'll turn into good racing for the fans. And, uh, you know, hopefully everybody enjoys it. Danny, you're one of the most naturally talented racers out there. So is there anything else you think you should be doing at this point besides getting back out on that track and maybe taking another championship? Uh, you know, I've, uh, I've been out riding my bicycle quite a bit here lately and, and just trying to stay busy, like I said, and uh, just be ready for the 200 and then to really get kicked off on that uh, R1. I mean, I'm excited. I've not had it really any seat time on uh, the Yamaha motorcycles over my career. I've always kind of been been elsewhere, so... Really ex excited to start a new chapter with uh, with this Yamaha team and TOBC and everybody on board. It's going to be a really good program. Right. Talk about that. This is the first time that you're going to be racing a Yamaha. You said, aside from your dirt track career uh, and being on a Yamaha then, talk about being on the Yamaha now. Yeah, no, that's really good. I mean, I've, I've battled against the Yamaha teams, you know, my whole career. And, um, you know, they've gotten the better half of me and I've gotten the better half of them a few times. So. Um, you know, I know everybody at Yamaha works really hard and they have a, uh, a tight group of people that know what they're doing. And I think if we listen and, and work with them, I think we're going to have a shot at winning us another championship here. Right. It's kind of full circle the way this has worked out. It used to be you against the Yamaha at any given time. Uh, and now you're riding with them and you look great in Yamaha blue, Danny. It looks very good. It's on you. different. It's different. <laughs> it is. Hey, it looks good. Embrace the blue. Uh, where are you right now? Anybody want to give a shout out to? Yeah, I'm down here at the local uh, Kane and Yamaha. Good friends of mine for a lot of years. They actually were kind of, we were teammates back in the day whenever I first started road racing when I was 14. So with it being the Yamaha deal, I figured it'd be a perfect time to come and uh, Skype from the, from the shop here at Tulsa. Very cool. And show us what you're sitting in front of. You got something pretty cool behind you. you got a pretty nice looking, uh, well, can you see it there? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can R1. see it. Am I going the wrong way? No, you got it. it. Oh, there we go. Yep, <laughs> pretty sweet looking motorcycles all around here. Very nice, Danny. Well, we're so happy for you. It's nice to see that you're going to have something put together for 2016 full time at the track the way you should be. Uh, Danny, good luck with this season. We'll be watching you at the Daytona 200. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you very on much. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely, Danny. We'll catch up with you soon. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Thanks so much for tuning into the first episode of 2016. There's plenty more where this came from, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America and AMA Pro Flat Track coverage. And don't forget to join over 10,000 others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join our newsletter and get this show and more straight in your inbox each Friday. We look forward to a great season with you and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Ad-lib, 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 ad-lib. I'm so bad at ad-libbing. Ad-lib, ad-lib. Hold on, I gotta be <laughs>
there. <laughs> is it that good? It is pretty good with some mayonnaise and ham. Not gonna lie. You're drinking really bad stuff. Yeah, what about being good to yourself? <laughs>